Hi, I'm Lee from Midi, and we're here at Cubmore Fisheries, where I'm gonna run you through my method feeder setup that guaranteed you will not have seen before. So it's been spoken about many, many different times about the different forms of presentation a method feeder, a hybrid feeder can, can give you. And before I start running through the tackle of what I'm using, I just want to talk about the type of presentation that I'm trying to achieve. The most sort of common accepted way that um, a method feeder works in terms of getting bites is that people are always trying to achieve, and I'll load this up to uh, demonstrate this, they're always trying to ch achieve a tight little pile of bait where basically you've got a pile of bait and a hook bait nailed as closely to the centre of it as possible. Now while I can see that definitely, definitely works at times, I think that works better for very aggressively feeding fish, which would be early on in a session, late on in a session, or some of those days where they're really attacking for bait. But I think there's a higher percentage of fish that don't feed in that way. So I'm trying to differ in my presentation with a, with a feeder to pick up those, those fish that feed more cautiously. So what I'm trying to achieve with, with my method feeder is yes, have an essential core of bait, but I'm also trying to have loose offerings around the center of it. And I want my hook bait to actually kick out away from the feeder and be uh, the first point of uh, food that they get to. Because when a fish starts feeding here, it's very unlikely in my mind that they're gonna swim past the first bit of bait they get to on the bottom to then go to the center. It's logically speaking, it means it's, they're more likely to have a, a couple of sucks of, of loose bait around the outside of the bull. And if your hook bait's there, you're actually raising the probability of your hook bait getting picked up. So how do I achieve it? So instead of having um, a hybrid feeder, I've chosen a method feeder for this. Uh, the reason being is I'll run you through how I, how, how I sort of thinking with, uh, with the baits. So I've got two different ground baits that I've mixed up. I've got a, a wet ground bait, which is gonna be very sticky and break down very slowly. And I've got a very dry ground bait. The ground bait I'm using is the adrenaline, the, uh, the green. All of the adrenaline baits lend themselves perfectly to this because being really fine, when mixed on the dry side, they melt, literally melt away instantly. When mixed wet, they stay as a condensed ball. Now, because of these two properties, it helps me to achieve the presentation that I'm trying to achieve. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is load up with the wet mix and compress that very, very hard onto the feeder. Like that's, that's basically at a mix that will, when you wind in, you will have to clean the feeder off basically. It's, it's mixed in that consistency that I want, to, want it to stay on the feeder. And the reason I want it to stay on the feeder is because on the next layer that I put on, which melts off really quickly, Due to that elevation caused by the layer underneath, it's naturally going to fall off with the slope uh, because you've got that solid ball underneath and, and the top core that's going to melt off the top. You, you're, you're, you're sort of like raising the possibility that your hook bait's going to, going to flick out of the feeder. And so in terms of the mix, that's how I achieve it. Then when we come to the rig, I've done things a bit differently to the norm. So what we've got, We've got method feeder. We've got a big length of 10 pound fluorocarbon. And we've, what, what we've got is a very short hook length, which is attached in line with what's called an Albright knot, which is the same knot that you'd use to tie a shock leader onto the line. Now the thinking behind that is, I've, got a, I've now got a section, a very stiff line below the feeder, that's naturally gonna kick out the hook bait. 
So I've got a much higher percentage chance that the uh, when, when, when that ground bait breaks down, that my hook bait's going to flick out and it's going to be on the perimeter of that little bit of bait. So what I do is, you've got a couple of water st um, sliding uh, stops there, which allow you to actually change instantly the length of your hook of your of your hook length and what I like to do before a session is is testing in the water how my sort of hook baits behaving with the mix that I've got and I can lengthen or uh, shorten the hook the hook length accordingly to make sure that it's always flicking out to being at the perimeter of the little ball of um, of bait that's sort of melted off the feeder generally speaking three and a half to four inch is about right I don't particularly like short hook lengths on the method feeder for carp. Um, basically, I think they're too short and it doesn't have time for the hook bait to sort of, uh, or the hook to, to turn in time to get effective hook hold. Once you start getting down to two, two and a half inch, three and a half to four inch is about right to me. Um, and then the length, of, uh, the length of 10 pound fluorocarbon I prefer to have it so it's the full length of the rod right the way down to the reel and then a couple of turns and what that allows me to do is when I'm playing fish not only am I casting on with a with a strong shock leader but when I'm playing fish I have a couple of turns of the of, of, of the of the reel um, when I can see the knot for the for the, uh, the fluorocarbon and that's when I know that I can net the fish they're, they're within netting range basically so yeah Everything about the rig is all about promoting the possibility of your hook bait flicking out to be on the perimeter of the little sort of circular melt of bait, if you like, that naturally happens when using a method feeder. All right, so we've got a nice big bowl of water here and I'm going to load this feeder up and talk about exactly what I'm trying to achieve. And hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate it in real time. So the first sort of layer I'm going to put on is the stodgy wet mix. Now the idea of this is that it doesn't come off the feeder. When you're winding back in, you are going to get bits still around, around the feeder. That's a good thing. It means it's done its job and you haven't fed the fish too much and given them too many offerings in, in the process. So that first layer is squeezed on really, really hard. I don't want that to come off at all. The next layer is the, um, is the really sort of dry, melty mix, as I would call it. And it's worth noting that the hook bait, when you put it into the mould, wants to be on the front end of where it's going to sit on the method feeder, because I want to promote it flicking off or melting off with the, with the feed. That's not put on anywhere near as hard. That's just sort of a light squeeze into the mould, and then just a little squeeze with the hand just to tighten it up slightly. So when we drop in, you'll notice straight away that that top layer is, is, is literally melting off instantly. And that's perfect, and because of that hard ball underneath, it's all drifting off, and you just see the hook bait then literally flick straight off, and that is right on the edge of the melt. So when a fish gets to it, that hook bait, if it comes from that front way, it's the first bit of bait it's getting to from that cast of that feeder, and that's exactly what I'm trying to achieve. I want that hook bait to be on the perimeter of the melt, basically and that's perfect. Well, there's a lovely common to finish the session on. I hope you've enjoyed this video and picked up some hints and tips on method feeder fishing that will help you in your next session. Like and subscribe to the MIDI YouTube channel and I'll see you again next time.